I'm audible. Uh, dear participant, audible. You can just uh, uh, yes. give your feedback on the yes, chat box. Sir. Yes, sir. It's clear, sir. Okay, thank you. So uh, always try to give your response uh, through the chat box. It will help us to conduct uh, our session smoothly. So okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Myself, uh, Dr. Vivek Tiwari, uh, uh, faculty member at Triple IT Nair Airport, and one of the coordinator of this faculty development program. I would like to convey my thanks to for your presence, for your registrations, and for your interest that you have shown for this FDP. And uh, the title uh, for the, the session that is being taken by me is the basic fundamental and terminology. Let me take you a little bit uh, with the background. Uh, uh, I agree that this is the fourth or fifth uh, faculty development, development program are organized by me and my uh, colleagues uh, in the area of data science and AI. Other than that, we have organized a lot of uh, uh, FTPs uh, on the similar areas, and we learn from the experiences that is given by the the participant that are they are more interested uh, to first uh, make the clear fundamentals, basic and terminology that are going to be used frequently when we start discussing any concept of the data science and machine learning. It may be an algorithmic label, maybe maybe an implementation label, maybe optimization label, whatever the things you will learn in the future, you need to be comfortable with basic fundamental and terminology. So it sometimes feels very intuitive that, that the participants must know all those terms. But I have gone through all your registrations. Many are from the electronics department. Many are from the mechanical department, and others. The very, various participants are from the different different stream. So I am considering all are you to the different different background, different different understanding level. When I talk about the different background, it doesn't mean some are more intelligent and some are weaker. I mean that you had a different level of exposure in the different different areas and many of you are want to learn the new things uh, uh, that may be a data science uh, algorithms concept and AI related. So many of you are beginner in this field. Many of you have uh, some exposure earlier. So we always take some one or two session where all the participant comes at the at the same level so then the further the sessions are there you can connect yourself so i'm not going to discuss here basic ai ai definition uh, application or of ai limitations of the of ai i'm not going to discuss like that typically i will start the fundamental technical discussion over here that is really essential for building a a, a concept uh, and it will help you to understand the further sessions so I will take one or two sessions. Maybe, maybe I think it will not going to end by today. The tomorrow I will also take some session on the fundamental. Or uh, I am going to with you uh, as a, as a resource person. I, I will I will take around seven to eight sessions during the workshop, and three or four sessions taken by the doctor Roja. So out of fourteen and fifteen sessions, eighty percent sessions are are taken by me and Oja. So you will face a continuity. You will try. You will but connect yourself with the content. So from, from the starting, we will pick up one concept, one, one algorithm, I will try to end it with the sequence. So we are not going to jump in here and there. So be with us and, and try to learn. Meanwhile, we have also invited some external experts that may have a different exposure. In between, I will call them to, to give and share their experiences. Otherwise, the sessions will be continue. Uh, with us. The question is what we are going to study now. So as uh, I always focus to, to give a uh, hands on with the participant. So as far as my uh, sessions are concerned, I, 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 I'm going to use the tool that is R, R language. So many of you uh, don't think about that. You don't know R or, or you don't have any exposure about and you are more comfortable with the Python. Don't worry about that. 
it's my responsibility to use all the syntax starting with all the minute details that you should know to understand the syntax so be with me whatever the syntax code i will i will touch i will use during the session i will explain in very detail so don't worry about that if you don't have any exposure on the r so we all are the researchers and and uh, the faculty members so we know understand the fundamental of the any programming language matter just about the syntax so i will cover everything you don't take any worry about that next uh, i will i will also cover the variable categorization so this variable categorization is not i am talking about any particular language uh, oriented uh, uh, syntax like uh, integer float variables like uh, maybe some some kind of data type with the r python matlab having different different type of data types i am not touching those they are very intuitive i will touch how to see the variable how how we can categorize the variable with ai and machine learning point of view so these are more conceptual things so we understand it, it and very important i will show you with the experiment why the variable categorization and the variable uh, uh, label you should know uh, with the ai and machine learning point of view data set i will consider because uh, ai and machine learning without data set is nothing and when data set comes a lot of things you have to do with the data starting with data set you have to split it you have to categorize it for a training testing everything i will cover then i will jump on the modeling fundamental of the modeling modeling uh, model development life cycles and what are the evaluation process what are the validation process i will try to cover with the syntax as you already know the more the focus uh, with the fdp is uh, a p processing with the exploration and and with the foundation so i will start to discussing one of the basic p processing method is the data rescaling so it comes under the p processing uh, techniques and p processing chapter of the ai so i will also cover there about the normalization and the structuralization with the hands on so these are the some content you can you can assume that uh, are going to be covered uh, during the fundamental and basic and terminology session it will take around two session so after those session uh, you will be comfortable to run over there so uh, uh, let me do one thing why it has happened with with us uh, because there is a, uh, there are two things you can run any fdp or any subject by two way once you need to declare about the you need to work with the concept we need to work with the concept and fundamental fundamental things another method you can adopt directly start with the algorithms so what are the things are preferred during the learning we may cover a, 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 a big list of algorithm during the five days but what we think if your fundamentals are clear you will develop the ability skill under yourself then you can learn a lot of algorithms in the future so i will also discuss algorithms the other sir will also discuss some algorithm we are not going to untouch it but primary object is to build a concept build a fundamental so that you can develop the things by yourself okay so starting with this uh, comments we are going to uh, discuss about here okay so i hope the screen is visible and content are enough bigger so that you can see it and you can read it as i started uh, with the r uh, i just discussed so let me work with the r so the link is given here i will share the document don't worry about that the link is given here r so if you don't have installed uh, the r environment r studio in your system So the link is given over here. You just pick this link. Just, just, just copy it. One minute, I am, I am doing for you. Yeah. So just copy that link, and when you open somewhere, yeah. So 
uh, the, the it will uh, take you direct to, to the R Studio website. There are a lot of options are there based on your operating system, based on your uh, architecture. These are choices. You can download uh, the R Studio. And you might have noticed over here the size of R Studio. You can see it is around 148, 171, or within a 20, uh, 200 MB. So it is. It does not require. It does not require at all a big machine or big computational requirement uh, that take a lot of resources. With a simple laptop, with a simple uh, desktop system, you can install the R it, and, and, and it will work for you. It is very lightweight software. Or it highly used, highly demand in AI and machine learning industry like Python. So uh, that thing you can download over here. It's up to you, and you just Google it. You will see a lot of things over here. Okay, some have, some have, someone have requested to share in the chat box. Okay, I have did it. So once you have installed over here, like I have installed, just let me open the R Studio uh, just for your reference, and you will see how it works, how it visualizes, how the things are there. So I have started over there, the R Studio. Okay, so for a simplicity, I will start with the minimum detail that that need to be given. I will start with that one. So let me first clear it. Okay, so you see that is the part that is the area where you should write the, your code. So it's like a typical Python. Suppose I have written some command over here. Hi. So uh, I have even command just enter it. You see the output there. If you have gone through and you are experienced with the Anaconda and the Python, the moment you write the command, just enter it, execute it, the output corresponding output is going to be uh, uh, displayed just uh, on the next line. Or if the output uh, you are looking for uh, is a graph or is any diagram, it is going to open in that that part of uh, space. So just uh, just focus on the two segment of that editor. That is the editor of R Studio. I'm talking about. This is the part on space where you where should uh, code yourself and, and write the code. And the moment you will run the code, if the output is a numerical or text value, it will displayed over here itself. Or if it require uh, uh, visualize your output in the bar chart or pie chart, it will come over here. So during the experiment or during the heads on, I will I will show all those things. So don't worry about that. Just try to make uh, familiar yourself uh, with 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 the tool. Uh, it is it is just visible to you. So I will going to use the only two section here. The section for the coding here. Section for the output. If the output is uh, some graph or bar chart like that. So you can see over here, these are the uh, other window. I will discuss during the time. Uh, uh, today we don't need to about the other property of that editor. So we have only the coding part and the output part. If the output part is required for a graph and other things. Okay, so start with the uh, directory system of the R. So what happens, suppose uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the data set. I will directly start with the data set. Whatever the algorithm you are learning or algorithm you are trying to implement, you need a data. The data may be uh, within your system and outside of your system. So once suppose my data set is here. OK, so this is the data set uh, you can consider like a. Insurance insurance is a something you can consider a data set having a lot of properties. It is a CSV file. So just uh, imagine it is a data set only having a lot of columns or a lot of data. So I want to work uh, uh, on this data. Maybe I have a model. I want to train my model on this data. So the data is something that is essential part of the machine learning. So I need to access that data. I need to access that data into the my R environment. So how to access uh, the data? There's the two options. First, try to see the directory. What is the meaning of directory? Here, if this is the data set it is stored at the root directory this data set suppose you want to work with that one it is stored in the root directory then when we call that data in the r environment we don't need to specify the complete path during the data uh, uh, the data import uh, procedure 
if your data set is not in the root directory every time you have to specify the full path so what it is what 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 i'm saying here that suppose your data set it as the root directory what is the root directory i will discuss data set is here you want to import your data set into the r environment for any purpose for any data data analysis purpose so just you need specify the both the options are there now now two options uh, there is a root directory already not audible i'm not audible somebody is writing so really i'm not audible uh, other may please respond uh, i'm not audible. audible sir you are okay Okay, okay. So, uh, participant who who have some problem, uh, please uh, relook uh, at your mic and speaker because the other participants are uh, comfortable to listen me. Okay, thank you. So now you have two options. Whatever data set you have, whatever the data set you have, you directly store at the root directory that is already there. Otherwise, the path is there where the data set is stored. You can you can set this path this path has a root directory this path has a root directory so now you have a two options you can copy your data already there is a root directory so that you can access this directly without mentioning without referring the complete path otherwise where is the data you can say that path has a root directory so that thing i am going to just do it with the r coding so here the get wd is a command the get wd is a command that is going to tell you what is the currently root directory uh, uh, has been set for you in the R environment. You see, the get wd means get working directory or root directory, both are same. So uh, the get wd, you run the command, it will uh, uh, give the information, this is the path or this is the directory, that is a root directory. So here you can just save your data if you want. But what happened, in the data science, the data size are in huge, maybe in terabyte, maybe in GBs. So every time you cannot sweep, you cannot shift, you cannot copy paste your data here and there. So better option is that you set the root directory where they, your data is. So that I'm going to just demonstrate you. My data is here, suppose. Insurance data is stored over here. You see there's some path. The path may be there, but don't worry about that. You just copy that your path. I'm going to make that location as the root directory. I'm not going to shift my data. There may be so, so many security issues, that's why. So there is another command, set wd. Set working directory. Syntax is here, just copy that path and just uh, make it backless. That is the only one syntax part. You have to take care about that. This I'm going to do for you. You just do it and just enter it. You see. There is no error means your command has successfully executed and you can recheck it by using the get wd you see earlier the get wd was that which means it was the root directory i through that command set wd i have changed the root directory now the root directory is here means where is my data set if where is my location at the system i have set uh, that path as a root directory so that thing i have done that thing i have done so I think uh, this is clear to everybody. Uh, okay. So okay. So uh, other participants who have already know that thing, so don't worry about that. Uh, uh, you will enjoy it, and you just make a kind of revision. 
okay so now uh, next part is the data import data import is a very essential part of any 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 data science programming maybe with matlab python or r whatever you're looking for you have to import your data so once we talk about the import uh, import my data means a lot of a lot of kind of uh, let me close it a lot of options are there a lot of options are there means you may talk about here okay I think yeah, ah yeah. Thank you. So here, what I'm saying, you can say, sir, there may be data set. I have data set in Excel file. Yes, your data set may be HTML file. Yes, your data set may be in form of text file. Yes, data may be form of CSV file. Yes, data may be form of JSON. Data data may be image. Data may be video. And many 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 kind of options are available with you. So what the purpose of writing all those things is that if in the in the in, in the data science the data are captured by the different different tool in different different format so if there is a variety of data means we have a variety of function we have a variety of function variety of functions in any language maybe r maybe python maybe matlab so similarly we are going to discuss how to import some set of data I, I will not cover all the type of data, how to import it. One couple of uh, data type, how to import it, I will just show you, then you can explore later. The most important uh, or most common file is here, uh, like a, a CSV file, comma separate file. Most of the data set you will find if you are working with the text data or, 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 or numerical data, the data will be in the CSV file. So a lot of options are there lot of options are there so the read table is a function come come automatic predefined function in the r you can use it but read dot table when you reuse it you have to purposefully specify the separator because csv is a comma separated file so read dot table is a, is a is a journal function you can use for the multiple purpose so when you are going to use read dot table for importing a csv file you have to specify what is the separator of the data. So you have to use comma separator. So it is a little bit hectic. Every time you have to take care about uh, uh, the comma, you forget or not. Better option is that we are 100% uh, or 99% uh, the data scientists are using read.csv. This is a dedicated command, dedicated function, import the CSV data. So what I'm going to demonstrate first, uh, suppose there is a data file. First, I will demonstrate the read dot uh, table command and how to how to how it works. So just I'm going to copy it. You see here I'm going to just paste it. You see the read dot table is a command and insurance dot csv is the something that is uh, that, that is a data here. Data set is here already stored in the root directory. That's why I don't need to write the complete code over here. Otherwise, you have to write C colon like that, like that, like that. So directly, I can mention the data set name that I want to import. If you want to keep the header, you can true. Otherwise, you can make it false. And separator is the comma. So just you just enter it. No error means your command has successfully uh, executed uh, whole data are uh, imported and stored in the R environment and the variable name is DF, whatever the variable name you can give like integer float and X, Y, Z you used to give. So whatever the variable name. Now you can check whether the data has been imported successfully or not. You just write the variable name where the data has stored. Just enter it, you will see the data. You will see the data. Complete data has been uh, imported successfully. And you can use that data by using just writing the name uh, DF. Okay. So oh, one minute. Yeah. So uh, that that uh, I have demonstrated, and now you can see uh, the beauty of read.csv command. So the new variable I have created df1, and the read.csv command I have used. 
and just need to pass the your file name other things you don't need to pass because it is the function that dedicately work for the csv file so just you copy it and just paste over here so the new variable i have created you see here and and df uh, one let me check the data has yeah again the same data has been already uh, successfully imported with the variable okay in that way you can use all those command read dot csv read dot table so what is it Ah, uh, okay. So uh, please, uh, audience, uh, try to mute yourself whenever you require. So just uh, unmute whenever it is required. So uh, how to import uh, the the data file that is not in your system? Because many times you have to work with the server data set are not available for you. So read dot csv also work with the csv file if the csv file is somewhere else. So you see the the this is the just URL where the CSV file is available. So just you give the URL here because the URL CSV file is not with your system. Then even then the read dot CSV will work. The read dot CSV is we work. You see the how to how to just use it. So just I copy the command here and just enter it. Done. DF. You see, so it is a file Amazon uh, Amazon house and somewhere it is stored. You can just recheck it and just have passed the URL. If the URL is working and it is valid and the corresponding data set will be stored in your environment. So in that way, in that way, you can also import your data if somewhere else in the Internet. Going ahead, a text file. So uh, if you have a text file, you can also do it and uh, the command that is used for importing a text data is read dot delim read dot delim like a read dot csv where you have to mention the the file you want to import and the text file having which kind of separator maybe tab separator maybe has maybe maybe any kind of separator in the text file you have to mention suppose here i have a text file you see and and you can just look it over here the has 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 is the the symbol that i have used for separating the variable so that file i'm going to import just for the demonstration uh, just the simple things very intuitive things if if you don't need you can just write on the chat box i can skip all those things uh, just uh, just you do it okay so don't uh, don't go about the uh, a warning a warning is something because there is no end of operator in the text file that's why it is saying it is incomplete so don't worry about that so just df3 just uh, just uh, just see whether the data are here or not you see vivek tiwari triple id rare pro so it is successfully imported so you can experiment by yourself to to considering the text file having a different different separator and you can explore how the function will work so it is a part of your exploration Sometimes what you uh, want, uh, you want sometime uh, the file is uh, the path I don't want to give. It many times happen that path or that, that things I don't want to give. So if somebody is writing, a, so it is compulsory to work with the R because I have Python already installed. Can I work with the Python? So uh, don't worry about that because nothing I'm going to do you to do to uh, to code for me. So whatever the concept I will teach over here, I will demonstrate by using the R. So you, if uh, the concept are same, so you don't need to worry about that. Demonstrate and implementation, I will, I will show you by using the R. So, so, so just be with me. Whatever the concept, what are the syntax, what are the way I'm just uh, doing here, exactly the same thing you have to repeat with the Python or MATLAB or any, any other language you are looking for. So don't worry about the Python or R or anything else. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to give any task to you. I'm not going to give any assignment to you. So just, uh, just, just free mind. Just be with me and see what I'm doing. So uh, whether the Python, MATLAB, all the things are same. It will not going to make you any trouble. So I think it. Hope it, it is clear with you. Uh, so sometimes what happen? I want to browse the file. I don't uh, worry about the pipe, uh, uh, path. So uh, uh, whatever the read dot delim or read dot csv or read dot csv two various versions are there. You can use 
and here you can uh, pass a variable file dot choose so what happened over here just just uh, you will understand very simple thing uh, just i'm going to copy over here so just enter it okay so it, it will going to uh, open a new window where you can browse uh, or you can you can go here and there where is the data set you can just choose over there so in that way you can also do something so file dot choose is, a, is a, another function you can pass as a parameter of read dot csv so it will allow you to navigate to find out your data if you stored somewhere in the your system and you can just select it upload it okay so i think that is over and just going ahead our packages like any software you are using any data science tool you are using maybe maybe that is r maybe python or matlab you have to install a library you have to import many things so r we call it package so uh, so the package means uh, it doesn't means that in the package there is a functions only predefined functions only in the packages maybe data set so uh, sometimes data sets are not available for you so there are many packages in the r you just refer that packages or include in your R environment a lot of data set come freely with those packages so you can work on uh, those data set that are pre-processed data so data uh, packages means it may be come with the functions library it may be come with the data set so first try to make it clear packages are very essential part of any data science language it's like a header file very simplicity i'm talking about a lot of things a lot of algorithms suppose you want to train a linear regression model or or or, or, or deep learning models or maybe a, uh, maybe maybe in knn maybe decision tree maybe random forest so you should understand the algorithm but you don't need to write the algorithm from the code or from the scratch everything is a predefined and available in the form of package you just call it and download it and just use, use it like a panda library in the python so it's a like packages uh, r is so rich uh, in term of packages whatever the algorithm whatever the any math Statistical procedure, statistical function, you can just try to recall, imagine everything is there. It is out of your imagination. Whatever the statistical function you can imagine, you can pick up any book from the library and see over there whether that function is available with the R or not. It will be available. Because R, uh, let me talk about R. R is not a new, new, new language. R earlier the name was S. S means statistics. So S or R are the same thing, but only designed for the analysis, dedicatedly. Is it is used for the analysis for statistics purpose. So it is more dedicated, uh, more rich in term of data analysis. Where the Python have more versatile language. You can develop the web programming or web application. You can develop the desktop application. You can do a lot of things with the Python. So Python is more, more, more versatile language, where R is more focused uh, or, or many dedicated language used for the data analysis, machine learning, or statistics purpose. So R is more rich in term of uh, their functionality. So uh, uh, we will, uh, you, we have understand about the R packages. So how to install it now? Suppose uh, there is a. Uh, install packages is the command install packages is the command just you you need to uh, write uh, install packages and under bracket you have to pass the package name you should know it so whatever the package for the linear regression for the for the random forest or for the any visualization whatever the package you know you have to pass over here just enter it it will work for you so install the packages is command you will use in for the session where you can use for your uh, uh, installation now you can check check if all uh, the package already with your system or not so if the package is already is uh, already installed in your system you want to list all those packages you can use that command install dot packages you can use that command you see so these are the number of packages already installed already xml xls string uh, many many packages are there already installed over there you have a lot of options you can just remove the packages if you want suppose there's a package you have already installed you have used it no longer there is no need so just you can remove uh, the package from the r environment most important thing if you have installed the package it doesn't means you can reference it you can use it 
you have to include that package into your session by using the library so there's a two word keyword first you have to install the package once it has successfully installed even you cannot use it you have to in include in your session by using the library uh, function or library command the same packages you have installed once successfully installed you have to include in your uh, session then you can use uh, the functions that that support so it is written note the install package does not work until get included into the R environment so i hope you have understood it that going ahead so a uh, basic terminologies that was about the r and fundamental of the r and with the time i will i will use the r code i will explain each and every uh, so don't worry about uh, the syntax i will i will cover everything so basic terminology i'm discuss about uh, uh, the ai ml or data science point of view so let's have a discussion about the uh, ai or machine learning algorithm category so a lot of category are there so like somebody may may, may talk about uh, there are uh, like a supervised learning as with that is are also used that word a supervised learning unsupervised learning so these are the main category of uh, the machine learning or ai algorithms you can divide other than that you there are other other other, other category also semi supervised learning i i think you have listened reinforcement learning reinforcement learning so other category or subcategory of also there with the with the machine learning or r so i'm not going to discuss that much of detailed discussion what we may have but i will cover supervised learning and unsupervised learning okay so uh, let's have a start so in the machine learning or ai uh, languages are uh, not languages you can say methods you can uh, uh, view in the two way whether the method comes under the unsupervised learning or underlying method comes under the supervised learning you can just think about that so now the supervised learning and this under the supervised learning uh, there you can divide the problem into the two way regression kind of problem or classification kind of problem so here you can think about that if you have a, a supervised learning uh, and the supervised learning then you can think about the given problem is a regression kind of problem it is a regression kind of problem it is a classification kind of problem you can think about that so if i ask the question what is regression kind of problem what is the classification kind of problem anybody can answer on the chat box regression and classification both are the supervised uh, learning so what what is the difference between regression and classification anybody can write on the chat box Anybody have any idea about the regression and classification? What are the difference between them? They both are supervised learning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So some 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 sometimes uh, continuous categorical. Yeah. Regression use some variable. Yeah. Yeah. Correct answer. So I will also include in my discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to know it. So the supervised learning, uh, uh, maybe uh, you can divide the whatever the problem is given to you in the supervised learning. Yeah, correct answer. Many have many participants have written the correct answer. So the classification kind of problem and the regression kind of problem. So you can see the through the diagram you can understand here. Yeah. So many of you don't know. So let me explain briefly. I will cover. So supervised learning means you want to predict something. Supervised learning. I will also cover what is the supervised learning. Don't worry about that. In the supervised learning, you want to predict something. So somebody will give you, suppose, image. Image is given to you. Image will go to the system. System means supervised learning. Then you have to identify whether the image is dog image and cat image. So that is called prediction. I want to predict something. Or suppose some 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 data is given to you. Okay. So somebody will say uh, whether uh, the person is uh, having some disease, some medical data, some disease having or not. So you will you will say he has suffered some disease, yes or no? Yes and no. Maybe coronavirus. So corona coronavirus related some specification is given to the machine, and machine will identify whether the person having a may have a corona infected or not. Yes or no. Sometime may happen. Data is given to you. You have to find out. Uh, you have to predict. The salary of particular person, CGPA of that particular student, or uh, the the flight late. How long flight is going to late? 
so what kind of things you have to create maybe some some number yeah maybe some number in salary maybe 20 20 thousand 2000 cgp is 7.8 flight delayed yes it may going to delay it by two minutes like that so you might have observed sometimes you have to predict a a, a degree or 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 a class so whether the things are the dog dog is a category cat is a category or whether yes or no is a category so sometimes when you're going to predict the category it is called the it is called the classification because you're going to classify the data it is called classification so any kind of problem under the supervised learning where you have to predict some category it is called some category or or label so that is called classification or classifying uh, the things you are going to do but sometimes you have to predict the some number the number are not classes these are the individual real number so such kind of problem we call the regression some kind of problem we can the regression so now i think uh, it make it uh, pretty clear to you uh, the, what is the classification you want to classify categorize your data more more way you can say the categorize your data in the regression so many so much data are there the the real and numerical are there you have to find out the relationship between them and the further you have to predict the, the things in numerical or real term so this is called a regression both comes under the supervised okay unsupervised learning uh, the data set is given to you you don't need to, you don't know uh, uh, what you are going to predict whether there are category or labels or numerical value we don't know you are not going to predict what we are going to do in the in any any kind of supervised unsupervised learning we are going to uh, uh, group the data we are going to group the data data is given to you in that way you have to do a lot of processing that is called maybe clustering you can say one of the example of unsupervised learning after the clustering it will make us some group so now this is the group uh, based on the some property that they share. So suppose these are the potato having a one a one color, they are similar to uh, this. So in the, in, the, in, the, in the unsupervised learning, we have to do a lot of scanning. We have to scan our data multiple times and try to group the data that have the, that, that share the similar property, looks similar. So whether that is dog or that there is cat, we don't know. We don't know the label just we, we just do something and just try to arrange the data and one group of data has shared the similar property so that is called uh, unsupervised learning so if you talk uh, uh, the example uh, in the supervised learning if somebody will take so all the algorithm like svm a many deep learning algorithm knn random forest decision tree uh, or or nay base a lot of algorithms you have listened comes under the supervised learning and 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 unsupervised learning so a regression a regression algorithm uh, logistic regression logistic regression many many algorithms are there that i i at least you have seen uh, listen name of those algorithms comes under the supervised learning and unsupervised learning un unsupervised learning example are first example just you can consider the clustering at least you know the name of the clustering so many algorithms are there association rule mining association rule in like like a priori algorithm at least know the name pca principal component analysis so any any feature any feature any feature any feature extraction method whatever the feature extraction method you know so PCA, feature extraction method, association rule mining and clustering are the example of unsupervised learning. Okay, I hope that is clear to everybody. If you have some, some, some question, confusion, you just write in the chat box. I am just seeing all those things thoroughly. Okay, I hope that category of algorithms, category of AI methods, you have gone through it and you know about the supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and there's a part we have covered. Other than that, there are some other other terminology, some word, some fundamental you need to understand what is the algorithm, what is the testing, what is the feature, what is the model, what is the training. Many things are there. Many words are there. They frequently used when you go uh, any book and attend any lecture, any video. A lot of uh, the words they are commonly used when they demonstrate, they, they, they explain the algorithm. So we try to understand those words here again uh, for a better understanding. 
So what is the feature? So when I talk about uh, now we are we are discussing about the data set. So once we have a data set, then data set may have a feature, may have a variable, may have an attribute. All are the same thing. With respect to the data set, data set may be image, may be video, may be text, may be numerical. Data set will must have the feature, variable, and attribute. All are the same thing. All are the same thing. So technically, feature is the measurable property of the object. Means my height. Suppose I have a data set with a student. The student name, height, weight, CGPA, 10th standard uh, marks, 12th standard marks, and many many things are there. So these are the property, the or, or simple uh, the column name of the Excel file. It is a feature, variable, or attribute, a property. Sometimes we call it. So in the data set, feature appears as a column. Very simple data set I'm talking about. Like 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 the data set you can demonstrate over here. Like uh, inference is some data set I will use also for the. So there's a feature you can see. What are the feature? Uh, the age of the person is given. The gender of the person is given. BMI of the person is given. How many children he or she have? Whether the person is smoke or not? Which part of the country they belong? What are the medical expenses he has to manage uh, uh, every year? So these are the column of a particular Excel file or data set is given to you that it is it is, it is we know technically the variable feature or 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 a property whatever you feel you can say that so oh, that thing is very 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 uh, intuitive you can understand it and a very important part of that because you don't have any data set and and the features you cannot use for that one once you have a data set once you have a feature then you can apply any data analysis method any modeling method they try to find out the pattern unique pattern they can contain in that data set contain they can learn if you're trying to go for the training the model can learn from the feature model model can learn from the data the so features are very important part for for whether you are applying the unsupervised learning and supervised all the cases data features are so important if you, if you have a good features good variables your algorithm performance will hike in that way if features are not related if features are not good Ultimate the results you will get through the data analysis and through the modeling will not going to make you happy at all. So I will also discuss during the linear regression how you can find out the feature is important or not, which features. If I if I give the question, uh, suppose I want to predict the expenses, medical expenses of a particular person. You assume that this is the given the medical expenses of a particular person. So it become a regression problem. Because I'm saying you create a model, you create a model that will predict the medical expenses of the person of the next year. It become a output variable and this become the input variable. So uh, we have to train our model with this variable, with this variable. And uh, suppose these variables are not important. Then whatever the model will learn from this variable, it will not going to help you a lot. It is not going to help you a lot. Suppose very important part you should discuss. Suppose I want to predict uh, uh, um, a student, a uh, student having with you. I want to I, I want to just predict in the coming placement drive, coming in placement drive, it is going to select, it is going to select yes or not. So that that I'm saying the problem is given to you. I have given a data set, a data set of a student of previous historical data, and I'm saying to create a model. The model will tell about the person, a student, uh, if you feed the data, is going to success in the placement drive, yes or no. So suppose data set have given some prop average CGPA, average CGPA. One variable is communication skill. One variable is communication skill. It, it is given the value maybe out of uh, 10, the seven or eight or nine numbers for the communication skill. Next is the technical skill. Next is the technical skill. Next is the hair color. Uh, color, yeah, pen number, pen number, etc. So we have uh, uh, four variables one, two, three, and four. And problem is given whether the student is going to success or not in the coming placement drive. Which feature is not important? In the chat box, you can write 
which feature is not important everybody can think that is an intuitive knowledge that is common sense because hair color is an important feature uh, maybe uh, maybe when you go for some medical or health related analysis but uh, my focus is uh, to to work on uh, whether the person or student is going to success in the coming placement drive or not my focus is different so once you have a different focus this feature become useless this can become useless this is more important feature this is more important feature this is more important feature okay now a different question i'm asking i have to predict again whether the person is going to select whether the person is going to select yes or no yes and no and the features are 001 feature name x y p q z y m and 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 the features value are like that features value are like that tell me which feature is not important there is three features one two and three my problem is that i want to uh, this is a data set data set of the student uh, the problem is given to you uh, based on the data set you have to decide whether the student the students are going to success in the placement drive, drive yes or no and we have the three feature one and two and three anybody can tell me which feature is uh, which features uh, are important and which feature is not important anybody can tell me what i have done i have encoded the column name i have encoded the column name so that is a common task uh, normally in, in in data science or ai ml hackathon normally uh, or in minor project or during my lab session i used to give to the student find out not audible i have done something now now i am audible dear dear participant now i am audible yes 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 sir you are okay, audible okay some oh, some time happen okay thank you so just give uh, your feedback whenever it, the such kind of things happen don't worry about that so what i was discussing our discussing uh, the problem was given to you the data set is student having with you or you want to predict whether the student is going to success in the coming placement drive or not and the features are 001 x10 pq and 2 pm so can you tell me which feature is important or not because earlier you have given the correct answer uh, uh, in, in this in this in this example Okay. 
here can you give the answer which feature is important feature one feature two and feature three which feature is important to decide the student is going to success or not yeah you cannot do it because what the problem i want to convey in the earlier example you had a domain knowledge because you teach the student if a student having a good communication skill a uh, 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 good uh, technical skill good cgpa there is a higher chance he will get success in the placement drive but if you are not a domain person how will you decide the feature is important or not because the decision and the learning who is going to learn the machine is going to learn not a human being is going to learn a very important part of uh, data science and ai i am discussing please with me i am asking here uh, uh, what i am asking so our objective is to machine machine should be should be so intelligent so machine should learn who is going to learn you are not going to learn so machine is going to learn and machine don't have any knowledge like you machine don't have any knowledge like you uh, any 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 earlier any 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 uh, historical knowledge machine does not have machine doesn't have okay so it this is the area of machine learning comes under the feature selection that's that was the part i want to discuss with you here the feature selection so like you failed to select the feature in the earlier example because the data set and 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 the feature i have given to you 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 didn't have any any domain knowledge about that one same thing happen with the machine same thing happen with the machine so how do how can you decide which feature is important or not if in excel file in any csv file you may have 1 to 100 features so for a particular given problem all the 100 features are not important subset of features may may work for you maybe maybe 20 features you are interested which 20 features so that is a part of uh, uh, data science and machine learning this is the open area and when somebody will talk about the feature selection which feature is important or not which feature is discriminatory or not you should connect yourself uh, by this terminology because when i will teach the linear regression and other faculty member will discuss about the classification they will use that word i have to drop that feature this feature is not working and this feature is not discriminative we have to select the important feature like deep learning many time in many time it happened so you you should you should be able to connect yourself what they are talking about so i hope that that conceptual part i have uh, clear when the people talk about the feature selection feature importance feature removal a feature discriminative power you, you can connect yourself i hope okay now talking about the class label so whatever uh, uh, the category we have discussed in the supervised learning means uh, 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 the data set is given to you in uh, given the data set there must be uh, some class there must be some label if you are if you are working with supervised learning and whatever the data set is giving to you whatever the data set giving to you so suppose the data set having one to n variable out of only single variable single variable you should declare as a, a single variable you should declare as a class class level or as a label okay so this is the variable the class uh, i will talk about or label i will talk about is the variable that you want to predict that you want to predict that is the most important part it is the most important part so how how uh, how can you uh, visualize it let me let me discuss over here so there is a two kind of data set uh, given to you data set may be uh, unlabeled data or labeled data so uh, when i talk about the unlabeled data or labeled data means i am talking about the class label whether the class or label is presented in the data set or not if there is a class or label is presented in your data set it is called labeled data you can use for the supervised learning if the, the data set is not labeled and uh, and uh, you need to apply the classification or supervised method you have to give your label manually otherwise you cannot do it 
so once the data set had missing a label a class uh, a category means the data is unlabeled data so unlabeled data you can use a label uh, data you can use for the clustering purpose for the unsupervised purpose both the data you can use it but if you are looking any supervised problem you should require the label data only okay so how uh, uh, are the differentiate we can make it uh, i will try to through give you example suppose this is given suppose data is given uh, images a set of images you have 1000 2000 10000 images you have against the images if you have uh, the name means what happen here uh, you can assume the data set is given uh, the image data is, data set is given suppose uh, there is an excel file there, there, there is a, a csv or csv file or excel file whatever you can assume in the first column it is given uh, uh, the path of the path of the image or image you can see another gear uh, another given uh, uh, the category category means it is dog whether image is cat whether something 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 so the if the data set given to you plus detail also given the image is what it is a dog image is cat image or what is there so it is called label it is called label it is called class so now you can feed that data to the any supervised learning, maybe a deep learning model, and model will learn how the dog look like, how the cat look like. So one, the model will learn the pattern of the dog and cat. In future, it can use for the prediction. So that the thing is given over here. If you have a data set like all the images you have, what kind of images you have against that images, if you know the category of images, these are the cat, because cat may have a different variety, may have a different texture, may have a different size. Similarly, uh, other 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 kind of images you may have. So that is called label data. This is the data. Image is the data, and label is the name of that image. And in semi-supervised, uh, uh, what happens? Sometimes uh, the images have data. Sometimes images don't have data. So suppose you are considering all the image uh, data that you have, but it was not specified what is that image for. So it is called unlabeled data. So if the data is unlabeled, you cannot use it for learning. You cannot use it for supervised learning. You cannot use it for training. Because if you feed the data to the algorithm, algorithm will learn what? Whether this, this image is, is, is cat image or aeroplane image, or it is a dog image. So system, you have to tell, these are the images uh, that comes under the dog category. These are the images comes under the cat category. So during the training process, the algorithm will learn the pattern. So uh, another example you can see like that uh, the label data whatever the images you have uh, you, you should do, you should have the label. So the label data may may have a, a some some regression type type of problems. So I want to predict the weight of the particular uh, animal, salary of particular animal. So if that that label uh, that part is given to you, it is called labeled data. Unlabeled data means only images you don't know. So the images I have taken so that you can connect by yourself. Otherwise, any kind of data may be labeled data, unlabeled data. You see, you see this example. So it is given uh, here. Uh, uh, yeah, you can you see over here. This is the email IDs are given. These are the left hand side. You can see the email IDs are given. This is the data, and in the middle uh, uh, part there is a feature set. Whether the email ID contain the ASCII character only. Uh, 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 special characters are there or not, dot, dots are there or not, at the rate is presented over or not, all the features are there. Last column you try to understand, valid mail ID, yes or no. So it is the data set that you can use to train your algorithm. So once a user will enter the email ID, your algorithm should, you should classify uh, whether the entered mail ID is valid or not. Because in many applications you have seen, when you go for the any registration uh, during the online registration, you type something your Gmail or, or Gmail ID, Yahoo ID, or maybe something. So sometime it will give the error, enter the valid mail ID. So valid mail ID means what? Means the given mail ID followed some pattern that should be uh, essential characteristics of a string that you are entering. If you a string that whatever string you have entered, it, it satisfied the some some property that uh, comes under the essential property of the email if it's satisfied you can say it is a valid mail id so yes or no means last part is given to you 
so if you have labeled your data like this is the valid mail id this is the valid mail id and bottoms are not valid mail id no 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 so you can feed that data for a training purpose because the answer is given to you the class or label means the answer if the answer is given to you based on the answer algorithm can learn if you have don't uh, answer or label in your data set what the things you are going to teach your algorithm is useless okay so going ahead a lot of example you can see suppose the data set is given from the some 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 health related data where the age is given chest pain is there or not blood pressure is there or not cholesterol ecg many values are there and the class means they suffer from some disease or not so 0101010101 here zero means means not a numerical value that you can consider 01 zero means class zero one means class another Zero means positive class. One means negative class. Zero means here. Yeah, no. One means yes. You can consider. So what happened in in machine learning? You try to understand. Uh, try to understand. Uh, try to understand. Uh, understand the encoding. Encoding. You try to understand it. So suppose the label is yes or no. So you can represent yes by one, no by zero. here you cannot apply the mathematical operations because this is the category one is a category zero is another category it doesn't means one multiply zero means zero one plus one means ones so once you represent your label or your class uh, category by numerical value it become a category it does not mean it is a numerical value sometimes they have a multiple classes suppose feedback feedback So whether you are happy, okay, not happy. So there, these are three classes you can use. Otherwise, you can use zero, one, or two. So many times in the data set, the category, the categories are represented by the numerical value. So don't confused with this numerical value. So these are not typical mathematical value. These are the category. so i will also cover that part into the detail so the same thing are demonstrated over here similarly sometime many example in many 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 data set if you prefer uh, the male and female suppose gender as given gender and, uh, and uh, you see the gender uh, the data set value may be 0 0 1 1 like that so one means male or zero means female you can consider okay so that is a part of uh, how how can you represent your label or categorical value by using the numerical way <laughs> i hope it is clear okay so i don't need to discuss more about that one uh, many examples are there so similarly same example i have taken suppose you want to use that uh, data set for the prediction purpose so it become a label it a uh, a class output variable that thing because you are looking to out so it become a class label So uh, there may be numerical value in the regression problem. It may be a categorical value in the uh, uh, classification problem. Okay, going ahead. Now uh, we'll talk about training and testing data set. What is the meaning of that? So many of you know about the training and testing data set, but let me explain in detail. Uh, just briefly, I will cover. So you you should know about the explicit programming and implicit programming. so uh, there are two kind of programming uh, methodology uh, program methodology i'm talking about so i i hope you know explicit programming uh, another pattern is uh, another method is the implicit programming so normally implicit programming and explicit explicit programming means mm, mm, uh, you have to you have to write the solution you have to write the solution means there should be there, there should, should require <coughs> logical steps do you require a mathematical solution you require a mathematical solution you should require a formula all those kind of problems that you can say deterministic problem <coughs> deterministic problem they comes under the explicit programming you have to solve by using the explicit programming implicit programming means it come automatic it come automatic means we are going to uh, we are going to towards to the ai and machine learning so because in the ai what we use something i want to train a, a 
uh, system or method they can automatically learn so here you don't have solution of the particular problem if you don't have a solution of the particular problem means you cannot write the formula you cannot write the formula you cannot solve the problem in logical step so if this category of problem is called non deterministic problem non deterministic problem so machine learning or data science are more to, towards to the implicit programming where you have to do the programming but you don't know the solution very interesting things i'm talking about you don't know the solution you don't have any formula to solve the problem you don't have a logical step to solve the problem but you want to solve the problem so it's called a implicit programming so that the word is written over here in the it happened through the training and testing data set how i will cover so normally what happened we normally go for the explicit programming we normally we do the uh, the explicit programming like uh, as an example uh, uh, write a program for fibonacci series write a program addition of two number addition of two number or 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 any cell calculation any any interest calculation so any kind of program or uh, uh, normally we do with the uh, students are the are the, uh, the uh, you can say um, are the part of that comes under the deterministic problem deterministic problem but in the ai what happened i will say we have images of dog cat apple okay write a program write a program they will ident identify what is dog what is cat and what is apple now i'm asking can you write a formula can you write formula to identify a dog to i identify a dog can you write a formula can you write a formula to identify a cat can you write a formula mathematical formula to identify the apple can you write it no yeah so in the chat box you can write yeah we can we, we cannot write it so means we don't have solution that's why that's that the things i want to convey so there there is a variety of problems in the world variety of problems in the world where we don't have any solution we don't have any solution these problems comes under the non deterministic problems here is the ai comes ai or ml comes so these are the problems where you have a solution mathematical solution formula then you can you can you have a formula so can you can do explicit programming but you don't have formula you don't have solution so you have to apply the implicit programming you don't have formula but you want to learn you don't have solution but i want to solve so how is it possible you require some data you require some data so me data is given to you the data is given to you algorithm will be there algorithm learn from the data algorithm will learn from the data so that process is called training what is process is called training so why it is called training because whatever the algorithm is given to you maybe cnn very simple algorithm cn talking about the algorithm does not know how to identify the dog the algorithm does know does not how to identify the cat so we have to teach how the dog look like so we have to feed a lot of images of the dog lot of images of the dog lot of images of the dog variety of images variety of color variety of texture so algorithm will learn how the dog look like similarly for the cat similarly for the other category of animal you have so that the process we call training so in the training we need the data that is called data for train data for test so now the I, i will try to cons, I, i will to give you the difference between data so normally when you go for the training process when you go for the training process whatever the data set is given to you what is the data set is given to you one you have to divide your data you have to divide your data or you have to split your data how and test data you have to do 
So normally, whatever the data is given, normally uh, it is 70 to 70 percent data are used for the training purpose, uh, training purpose, or, or or 20 to 25 percent data we use for the testing purpose. What is the difference between them? Training data, what a data are given with answer. Data are given with answer. Data are given with the answer. Answer means label will be there. Category there. means I will feed a image. I will also feed the images dog. I will feed the image a lot of images. Not a, I will say it is cat. So because uh, algorithm need to learn during the training. So a lot of data required. That's why I made part of the major part of data. I, I feed the as a, as a as a training because the more images more data set more better you will learn once you say your algorithm uh, is okay your training process is okay uh, training process over you have to check whether your algorithm are performing good or not so again i will feed the data it was separated here uh, as a test data but i will not give the uh, the label and answer I will not give. Label I will not give. So once I will feed the image, the algorithm have to predict, algorithm have to predict it is dog or it is cat. So once algorithm will predict dog or cat, you have the correct answer also. You have the correct answer also or already saved somewhere else. Then then you have to match whatever the answer uh, that is correct answer or the real value. And what is the predicted value? They are same or the percentage. The percentage of the correct prediction, the percentage of the correct prediction is called accuracy. Accuracy. So suppose there were in the test cases there were hundred images. Out of hundred, uh, eighty uh, images are predicted by my model was correct. So I will say eighty percent accuracy of my model. So that was the purpose of uh, uh, some 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 participants are writing the validation data is also I agree with that one. So uh, I will just cover later that part. First, try to build the concept of training and testing. So once you have understood the training and testing, I will also discuss about the validation data, cross validation, everything I will discuss. So one by one and slowly slowly we will go to to develop our uh, concept and understanding because at the beginning of uh, the FDP many student or many participant I should say have written uh, mail to me sorry uh, take one or two uh, fundamental classes because they belongs to the different different level of understanding. So if somebody know the validation and other things very happy and very good to know me and but but the FDP is for everybody. So let them uh, come uh, on the same platform. So I hope training and testing data uh, is clear to everybody. I think uh, time is also over. So, so okay, let me finish it. Then I will discuss uh, the lecture uh, 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 later. So again, I'm going to summarize that process. Uh, the training data is given to you. ML algorithms are there. Uh, it it learns the data. Uh, then your algorithm is uh, learned. Then you have to feed the test data over there, and whatever the result and prediction made by made by your 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 algorithm, we have to evaluate your uh, prediction. Evaluate means that accuracy I was talking about. So the accuracy is not only one way to measure the performance of your model. There are many other a lot of variety of parameters are there. So against which you should check the performance of your model one of uh, those performance are is, uh, is 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 accuracy so my objective is to just make you aware about the process because when i will start covering the algorithms and other faculty members will cover the algorithms they will not cover all those things immediately they will talk about the training data testing data validation data accuracy like that like that not features good feature everything they will go in the like the rapid way so you should uh, have, must have a clear picture about that one. So uh, that thing already over data set, whatever you have, uh, uh, the training data written, uh, I have written answer with label. 
and and the goal of training data is the learning and around 70% data we have to keep for the training purpose and a testing purpose means without any level without any answer the goal is to evaluate your performance uh, testing your performance uh, how your algorithm is working like that so uh, the goal of training data i have explained goal of testing data i have explained the percentage of that i have explained and uh, okay so uh, in the next class next session i will i will take it all those things whatever i have explained till date by through uh, the coding and hands on hands on session i will take so how to split the data how to write it how to use it and and you can see the validation somebody talking about the validation hold out method and and the a fold cross validation leave one out uh, cut cross validation all those things bootstrapping method i am going to discuss because these methods are very important very intuitive and we should know about that so the next class is going to be more important for more technical discussion going to have with some hands on okay so uh, this this fundamental and and uh, the terminology and basic class will continue uh, to the next session so as per the timetable uh, uh, afternoon we don't have any session so because there was a planned a session afternoon uh, after lunch there was a yoga and meditation uh, session was there it will not be there because uh, the expert and 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 uh, who was there mr rajiv nayar had a some urgent work so he is not going to available so the yoga and training session is going to be the first session tomorrow so tomorrow let me let me explain other things about that tomorrow means the second november i'm talking about 9 to 10:30 yoga and meditation okay then next two classes 10:30 to 12 and then 12 to 1:30 i will take i will take that class so tomorrow they are going to three session first session will be on the yoga and meditation next two continuous session will be taken by me where i will i will try to cover the basics code i will start the linear regression i will start the linear regression tomorrow so this is my plan for tomorrow basic i will try to cover with the code and 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 linear regression i will start that is a one of the regression or supervised learning in in ai okay so i hope uh, the session was informative maybe uh, for some candidate it may be a repetition or uh, uh, sometimes you know already those things but for other students uh, or the participant i hope uh, the the session was so informative now we can discuss something if you know about because as a coordinator i can also attendance link i have shared already at the beginning attendance link i have shared i will i, I will just going to uh, disable that attendance link after 15 minutes so please fill your attendance because uh, it will not going to be uh, open or enabled full day uh, within the 15 to 20 minute i will disable the attendance link so give your attendance properly or any any other question any other doubt maybe technically you can ask or maybe administrative point of view uh, uh, about uh, the fdp you can look for so the discussion session we may run uh, uh, for the next 5 minute if you want anybody having any doubt so uh, all of you have given your attendance so that i can disable it all of you have given your attendance so that i can disable it no sir wait for 10 minutes sir wait sir i am also not giving sir okay 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 so any feedback about the session it was slow or, or should i skip it or directly jump on uh, to the uh, algorithm discussion or you want such kind of uh, sessions where we can develop the basic understanding what is your feedback the pace was correct sir or the beginners also it is very important to understand the concept so okay thank you everything was very good and the session was great thank you thank you thank you okay validation data somebody uh, talking about uh, so tomorrow uh, tomorrow i will take a session i will include the, about the validation so actually uh, student or participants are confused what is the testing data what is the validation data or what is the uh, 
uh, uh, training data. So I will cover it tomorrow. Okay, sir. So today, uh, after uh, noon session, would be uh, there or not? Because yoga, you shifted uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, 